Good afternoon. I'm currently a hand fellow in Cardiff and I'll briefly summarise external fixator use in distal radius fractures. I will run through the indications for external fixation, run through common external fixator trays and components, how to apply an external fixator, including the pitfalls and structures at risk. Of all the fracture management techniques we are talking through this afternoon, external fixators probably have the narrowest indications for use. However, they play a vital role in the multiply injured patient in a damage control orthopedic setting, in lower resource areas as a definitive surgical solution, in the unreconstructable distal radius fracture, and open fractures with soft tissue compromise. Whichever the indication, it can be used as either a temporary or a definitive solution. When you scrub up to apply an external fixator, this is the usual setup of the surgical tray you can expect. There are several different pin sizes, several different bar sizes, pin clamps, bar to bar couplers, pin to bar couplers with straight and angled posts. These are the components that you will require for your distal radius fractures. The gold five millimeter threaded pins that may or may not be self-drilling and self-tapping, a black five millimeter connecting bar, a bar to bar coupler, a four hole pin clamp, and an angled post to attach into the four hole pin clamp. As you can see in these diagrams, the couplers are used to attach connecting rods to connecting rods, often referred to as bar to bar, or pin to bar couplers. The pins are inserted into the metacarpal and distal radius, and they're inserted through the four hole pin clamps. There are two types of external fixation constructs, bridging, which spans across the fracture site, as can be seen in the bottom two pictures, or a non-bridging periarticular external fixator, with pins inserted into fracture fragments to hold a certain position. I will now briefly describe application of an external fixator. Step one is inserting two pins into the radius. Ensure two skin incisions are made and bluntly dissect down to the radial shaft. The second pin position is inserted through a hole of the four hole clamp. Step two is inserting the metacarpal pins. Again, make two incisions and use blunt dissection to ensure direct bone contact. Distal pin position should be at the metacarpal shaft, not in the metacarpal head, ensuring the pin holds across two cortices. The second pin position is again guided by the four hole pin clamp holes. The safe zone for application is 30 to 40 degrees in the sagittal plane away from the extensor tendons. The frame can then be constructed, applying rods and couplers to attach the proximal and distal components. Once constructed, the frame tension can be altered to ensure the fracture is reduced. This should be performed under X-ray guidance and avoid over distraction. If the frame is being used as definitive fixation, it is left in situ for six weeks. It's important to extend the pin site incisions to reduce the tension on the skin, as this then lowers the reduce, risk of infection at the pin sites. The positions of the pin sites should have been planned to avoid any definitive surgical fixation field. post operatively pin site care involves a weekly assessment and cleaning of the pins. Passive movements of the fingers and thumb should be encouraged immediately follow up, following application. And if plate fixation will be the definitive treatment, it's important to have a separate set for the plate fixation and the external fixation removal with curatage of the pin site tracks to minimize infection. There are several structures at risk when inserting the external fixator pins. Firstly, the extensor tendons to the index finger. To reduce the risk of transfixion of the tendon, place the index finger MCPJ into 90 degrees of flexion 
moving the tendons onwards and away from the surgical field. The next pitfall is a mesocarpal fracture. To reduce this risk, when inserting the pins, ensure they are, the, they are not inserted eccentrically. And finally, the superficial radial nerve. This runs underneath brachioradialis in the forearm and perforates its tendon to pass into the dorsal forearm compartment. To avoid the nerve, use blunt dissection and ensure the pin position in the radius is more than six centimeters from the radiocarpal joint and between the EDC and the ECRL muscle bellies. So in summary, we've run through the indications for external fixation, gone through a common external fixator set and how to apply an external fixator as well as common pitfalls. Thank you.